Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we follow NGO Vice Chairman Jeff Garrod on a muntjac hunt. Plus we bring you an on-site report from the Northern Shooting Show and all the news from the shooting world. We join NGO Vice President Jeff Garrett as he prepares for a high seat stint on his ground. It's March and Fallow and Muntjac are both on the cards. No guests today with cold quarters to complete, Jeff is doing the job himself. Right. Um just come up to the last week in March now and I'm uh, just sitting in the high seat now just to do a last bit of uh, fallow culling. Um, we've got a few does about. We've had a, we've had a glass round um, the wood and there's about 20 sitting just the other side about 200 yards upwind from us at the moment can't do nothing where they are there because they're on a field that, that overlooks the village uh, so we just crept into this high seat now and just hopefully you know they might creep in a little bit and we might get a shot later on um, but also um, that what I tend to do through the year is if I'm, a, if I'm after fallow I don't shoot the monk jack because the fallow fairly skitty around here so if you have a shot at a monk jack early on in the evening you can just forget the fallow, they'll be just gone. So uh, what we'll do is we'll have a look, we'll give it a couple of hours for fallow. If there's nothing to belt, we'll give the last sort of 20 minutes, half hour to monk jack. If anything comes through monk jack wise, uh, we'll, uh, we'll give that a go, see what happens. Two hours pass and despite a patient, quiet high seat vigil, the fallow just aren't going to show. Jeff makes the decision to switch his target to the more diminutive Muntjac. Jeff is surrounded by Munties, but true to form they are holding in the woodland scrub and a shot may prove difficult. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that, there's a good sign that obviously we put the bullet in the right place. But as it shot off, it went a bit, it went out of view of the high seat, and it sounded like it crashed into some brambles and bushes there. So we'll just have a look over here, see what's over here, see if we can find it. Where the bullet's gone in, exactly where I was aiming for his engine room. It's a nice buck there, well worth the wait there. We'd seen one or two walking about tonight, um, but this one just kept eluding us. We've seen it a couple of times. 
but uh, it made a mistake of getting presenting a shot and we took it there we have nice buck well, I'm just going to um, just going to get this one out of the way and I think we've still got sort of half an hour's light so we're just going to jump back up the high seat and uh, see what's about because while we were sitting in there we could see Monk Jack mooching about all around here so you never know we might get one uh, come back in uh, before we pack up tonight yeah we've got um, there's a buck and a doe just over the way there they're just I've been watching them for about 10 minutes quarter now but they've all been behind all these bushes here so they're just slowly walking to our left and I'm hoping they're going to come across this clear patch here so I can take out uh, take the doe out as she comes through, or she comes through into view, so another couple of minutes and we might uh, might be there. Now we're back up the high seat, Muntjak have continued to show, but time's not on our side. We may not get another clear shot before the light fades. The Swarovski Bino and Scope combo have really proved their worth tonight, pulling in light to enable Jeff to see a book at last knock-ins as the camera was nearly giving up. Well, that was a bit of an effort. Um, we saw a doe followed by a buck cross along the, the edge of the wood there. Couldn't get a shot off early on in the evening and they went through into the bushes behind us. Um, probably about 10 minutes, a quarter of an hour later, we saw the doe come back out again. Then the buck followed it. They went behind all these bushes just here and I think we must have been 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, so watching them behind. He couldn't get his shot off here. And again, we must have waited again another 20 minutes. As you can see, the light is fading away. It's gone that way, it's gone to the left, it's turned around, it's come to the right. And just literally a couple of minutes ago, it just gave me the chance of a shot through here. So we'll, we'll get down. Uh, we've unloaded the... Uh, Brown and we'll get down and we'll go and have a look see what he's like. This nice little monkey buck. About two years, two or three years old. I can what? You, yeah, it's um, part of the cameraman's role to um, help. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, um, as it turned out, um, I shot the first buck in the nice daylight and got out and found it, got it out of the way. Because there was still a good bit of daylight about, got back in the high seat because we we had seen, you know, one or two more uh, monkeys about. So, got in there, sat there watching one for a bit of while, watching a couple there to our right, and it just kept getting darker and darker. And right at the very end, when it was just about light enough to see it, uh, this buck presented itself with a shot. I took it and it's a nice way to finish the evening, two nice little bucks. This is the Shooting Show News. This week we report from the Northern Shooting Show in Harrogate. Now in its second year, the show is growing rapidly and received glowing reports from punters and exhibitors alike. With a mix of indoor halls and outdoor exhibits, we got the best of both worlds, with busy shooting lines joining the biggest names in the shooting industry. One name getting constant interest over the weekend was Sauer. The Sauer 404 has had a bit of a, bit of a slow start in the UK, but now with the, with the arrival of the, of the XTC, the carbon stock Sauer 404, 
it's really, really starting to get pace and traction. It's a really interesting rifle concept in the base version. And now that they can offer a full carbon stock version with all the accessories to go with it, really exciting rifle and we're seeing, we're seeing now the interest is massive. We're looking at the 5,500 pounds here, but I think for what it has to offer, I think that's rather cheap. You've got all the advantages, you've got all the adjustabilities, you've got a really cool range of, of accessories to go with the rifle that are all geared to practicality and lightness. So they've really, really pushed the boat out in terms of what it, what it can offer to the stalker. Insau is one of the oldest, oldest rifle makers or hunting gun manufacturers in the world still going. So, and they're traditionally, they always offer, try to offer the full package to the hunter that wants to buy into the Sauer brand to not only own a rifle, but only own a Sauer shotgun of some sort. So, Sauer have gone full circle and they've started doing that again. And with the arrival of the Sauer Apollon and the Artemis, they have a ladies version as well. It's geared towards that hunter who's just looking for the practicality and you know, a, a good tool for the job, which again, the Sauer shotgun really, really offers. Ely Hawk were pleased with how the show went and told us they had big plans for the rest of the year. Recently, uh, Tom Croft, the England international rugby player, he signed up with us as a brand ambassador. Um, so he's going to be uh, shooting Zenith across the next se game season for us. And Vinnie Jones visited our site and took, went for a tour round and uh, was so impressed he decided to also sign up as a brand ambassador so we're going to hopefully do more work with him across um, the coming year. Um, it's been really busy at, at, at Ely anyway. We've had a lot of interest in our new Pigeon HV 32 gram six shot. The website has been updated. We've now got monthly competitions running so people can enter in every month to a new competition to win either cartridges, experiences. We've got a whole range of things coming up over the next next year which will really um, excite people. We saw Swarovski's high-tech DS scope at EWA. Now we got a chance to see what the UK public thought of it. The reaction to uh, the show here this weekend, Northern Shooting Show, has been tremendous to be honest. been lots of interest in it and uh, the reaction to it has been, I think, blown us away. Um, yeah, it's all positive. We um, spent a week, ten days in Mull with the team from Austria the film production team, photographers, uh, and yeah, it was just uh, first class. Um, um, I, I can't kind of say how much I enjoyed it. I mean, when the Austrian team phoned me uh, to give me the opportunity to star in the role, I think I took about five seconds to say yes. Yeah, I was kind of blown away, but yeah, it was a great experience. And, you know, to get on the ferry at Oban and out to Mall and onto the estate where the, the filming took place was, yeah, just, um, it was uh, a great experience. The, the terrain there from sea level straight up to sort of three, four hundred metres, this is the ideal product for that kind of sort of experience um, because of the altitude and what have you. This is going to obviously help if you're taking a shot um, at that sort of height at three, four hundred metres with a bit of a drop or if you're shooting into the hills as well, the device will obviously give you that um, capability to calculate all the, the bullet drop for you. Another optics brand, Leopold, showed off its first ever thermal imager. This is Leopold's first venture into thermal optics. It's the LTO, it's the uh, uh, Leopold Thermal Optic. Uh, it's a tracking device, it's, the, uh, it's uh, uh, a very small, very compact thermal device. It's got six settings, it's got six magnifications, uh, it's got a range of just over about 100 metres for detection. Uh, it's very sensitive, it can uh, track a blood trail and the refresh time is 30 hertz so it's very quick. On a 30 mil tube, it's lightweight, works from between minus 5 and uh, plus 40 degrees. Uh, so yeah, it's a very, very handy compact thermal. £995 is a recommended retail price. And that's the whole point about the about uh, Leopold and their rebranding of the image. Uh, there's, a, there's a strong rebrand coming out of Leopold. Uh, they've got loads of new products coming out and I think they're really trying to make up uh, the, maybe some of the market loss that they've had in the past couple of years. And if night vision's your thing, don't miss the new handheld Nocturna unit. The, the initial idea around it was we have a kind of scope mounted hunting device that's out there. We kind of want to branch out into a more security based product um, and it's also got uses in the hunting market as well. So it's just a 100 meter, either a 50 meter or a 100 meter 
handheld version, so a bit like our Spotter Extreme, um, just more lightweight, compact, um, with a few little adjustment buttons just for scanning around, that kind of thing, security guards. So kind of scanning around, if you've, say, shot a fox, you want him to go around looking for it, um, easily retrieve the fox, that kind of thing, or scan around uh, a smaller permission for uh, a rabbit or possibly even a fox um, uh, at closer range. So. The amount of sort of feedback we've got from peak hunters here has been really, really positive. So um, I'm looking forward to uh, to pushing it further. Hunters were able to get personal loans for all their big buys thanks to Omni Capital, which is taking its show on the road this year. I'm Emily from Omni Capital Retail Finance, and we're at the Northern Shooting Show. Uh, we are here following a successful attendance at the Great British Shooting Show this year uh, and we'll also be at the Game Fair later this year. We've met lots of existing customers as well as uh, quite a few new customers uh, wanting to apply for a personal loan or a retail finance loan through our retailers. So yeah, it's been a good show for us. You can visit our website which is www.ocrf.co.uk or they can give us a phone call in the office. That's all we have time for at the Yorkshire Event Centre, and that was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been the Shooting Show, and it's good night from him. And, it's and good, good night, night from, from you. Me.